There are a lot of snowfall forecast maps out on social media and on the web that are going viral, showing snowfall forecasts up to a week in advance. The National Weather Service of Chicago does not post or share those type of snowfall maps beyond a couple days out, and here's why. Snowfall forecasting is extraordinarily tricky and difficult, with many, many variables going into the equation, including how much precipitation is going to fall, which is dictated by how much moisture the storm system will have to work with, where the storm tracks, how strong it will be. Then the question comes, will it even be cold enough for snow? If so, how fluffy will the snow be? For instance, looking at the storm that's going to affect the area on Tuesday, the little low pressures, the little L's that range in location from southern Indiana all the way down to southern Mississippi, show the various forecast models and how much of a range there is still in the forecast track for that low pressure system just three days out, almost a 450 mile spread. If one of the more northern tracks are right, we could be looking at heavy snow from northern Missouri to northern Indiana. Conversely, if more of the southern track is right, the heavy snow could shift all the way south into Arkansas or Kentucky. So the uh, confidence three, four, five, and especially beyond three days out tends to really decrease substantially. Not only that, heavy snow bands can often be pretty narrow. For instance, back on the January 19th uh, snowfall system, the range and the gradient in snowfall was very, very tight, with Bloomington just getting an inch or two, with like six to ten inches of snow as you get up towards Pontiac. So trying to forecast that level of detail days in advance, the skill is just really not there. So one of the things I want to show you is uh, what we look at is ensemble forecasting, which is basically just taking a certain model and tweaking the conditions very slightly, the initial conditions, and running it over and over and over with slight tweaks. The tweaks are being made because we really don't, can't, don't have the observation density of the atmosphere to know exactly what's going on, so we want to look at the range of possibilities of how something could be. Now what you're looking at in the two yellow lines is roughly a proxy for where the jet streams are. The blue are the where the the blue lines are the different runs for the northern jet, and the red is the different lines for the southern jet. And one of the things you'll notice as you go out in time, this is the initial conditions. As you go out a couple of days, you notice you get a quite a bit of spread starts to develop. By the time you get out four, four, five, and six, and even seven days, the amount of spread is just tremendous to show that the possibilities of how the atmosphere could evolve five, six, seven days out pretty much run the full gamut. If we don't even know where the exact jet stream is going to be, we certainly can't say for a high degree of certainty where the surface low will be, how strong it will be, how much moisture we'll have, and thus how much snow will fall. So we really try to stray, stray away from putting out snowfall forecasts that far in advance just because of this type of inherent uncertainty that develops in time. And that shows up in the verification statistics as well. This is the verification for a half inch or greater of precipitation. Notice one day out the skill scores are around uh, 0.27 to 0.3. By the time you get out to day six, the uh, skill scores are cut pretty much in half. If your forecast was always perfect, it would be 1.0, and if you were never right, it would be 0.0. You notice by the time you get to day five and day six, we're getting pretty close to being never right for a verification of a half inch or more of precipitation. So for instance, uh, taking a quick look at Tuesday's forecast and the range of possibilities of the different forecast models, this is... Uh, Looking for the Tuesday, Tuesday night system, you've got the high end one model forecasting nearly 15 inches of snow for O'Hare, while on the low end there's another model showing absolutely no snow whatsoever with all those mod lines in between the indicative of different models that run the gamut for something between 0 and 15 inches on Tuesday. So if we've got that sort of a range of possibilities three days out, just imagine what the range of possibilities is as you get out four, five, six days, which is why we tend to not show those type of snowfall forecasts. So the skill, since, since the skill drops off so quickly, and not only that, we tend to see significant changes from run to run. So one run will show 15-inch swath in central Illinois, the next run will show that 15-inch swath in Wisconsin, and then the next run it's gone, gone altogether, the next run it's doubled. It just changes significantly as you get out towards a four, five, and six day time range. One thing we can forecast with a good deal of skill is the general synoptic patterns. Okay, it looks like there's going to be a significant low pressure system that'll track somewhere into the Midwest in this time frame. A pattern like that is not all uncommon to see significant snow in our area. So we, you'll notice, and we will forecast, a potential for significant snowfall several days in advance and even a week out. The difference is we won't put out a specific snowfall map saying there will be 15.8 inches of snow in a given location because that skill is just not there yet. So we tend to forecast more on the big picture when you get out beyond days three, four, and five, and tend to keep our more specific snowfall forecast confined to the first couple of days in the forecast period.